We're back with our chief Washington correspondent, John Carl, is out with a new book. It's called Tired of Winning, Donald Trump at the End of the Grand Old Party. This is your third book on Donald Trump, but boy, your reporting history with him goes back a lot longer than that. Uh, I have known Donald Trump, I mean, I hate to say it, George, for 30 years. Uh, I was a reporter in New York at the New York Post, which for years was his favorite newspaper. <laughs> I don't know if it still is. Uh, and he was a guy you could pick up the phone and, you know, if you had a slow news day, he'd give you a story. And he and he, the gift they kept on giving for so, so many years. And, and you have um, so many revelations in this book that, you know, it's hard to be startled by anything that Donald Trump does anymore. But he believed he could be reinstated even after Joe Biden took office. Yeah, th this is truly mind blowing. So he became enthralled with this idea that after he left the White House, that somehow all of this evidence was going to come forward that was going to force the Supreme Court to declare that the 2020 election didn't happen, wasn't valid. They were going to eject Joe Biden from the White House. He would be able to go in. Uh, Mike Lindell, the MyPillow guy who pushed a lot of this stuff, had an oddly specific date for it. He said it was going to happen on August 13th, 2021. What I realized, I, I knew it, that Lindell was saying this back then, what I realized in reporting on this is that he was obsessed with the idea and seemed to truly believe that he can make it happen. And people around him were really worried about the fact that he was losing case, touch with reality. It's not just him spreading lies for, for the sake of baking that in. He actually believed this. Well, it, it sure seemed that way. Uh, you know, there, there's a big debate whether or not he really knew he lost or whether he came to believe he lost, but on this, he seemed to believe that whatever the truth was of 2020, that he was going to somehow be able to be reinstated. And by the way, this lasted uh, until into last year. Uh, there was a, a, a very dramatic moment I describe in the book with a very conservative pro-Trump congressman named Mo Brooks. This guy wore body armor to the president's speech, to Trump's speech on January 6th. I mean, as loyal as anybody. And he uh, got a call from Trump demanding that he go out and publicly uh, announced that Biden needed to leave the White House and, and, and that Trump should be reinstated. He refused and Trump cut him off, took away his endorsement in a race, and the guy ended up losing a Republican primary. Since then, of course, we've seen 91 different charges, yeah. uh, felony charges against the former president, yet at the same time, he seems to have solidified his hold on the Republican Party. Yes, he has uh, found a new birth for his campaign in the cases against him. As I write in the book, he, his entire campaign, and now you're really seeing it just this past week, uh, is, is a come retribution campaign. By the way, a phrase that Steve Bannon uh, used when I, in my interviews with him, said it goes back to the assassination plot that the Confederacy had against Abraham Lincoln. So this is a, this is a very dark, dark thing. We heard him refer to his opponents uh, just the other day as vermin. Uh, Adolf Hitler talk. Using, using, you know, language out of the Third Reich. Uh, he wants to eliminate and annihilate his enemies and get retribution. He tells his people that they're coming after me because their real target is you and I'm standing in the way. And for the hardcore base, uh, it's working. He's seen as a, a victim and it, he doesn't really have a policy agenda so much as, a, as an agenda of getting revenge on his enemies and insisting on loyalty. How do you explain how that's worked with so many Republican leaders? Well, I, I think, you know, there are two really pivotal moments uh, uh, right after he left the White House. One famously is when Kevin McCarthy went to visit him in Mar-a-Lago. The former Speaker of the House, eight days after Trump left the White House, giving him a, you know, giving him kind of a, a new lifeline back into the party. But another really critical moment was when Ronna McDaniel, the chairman of the party, faced a threat from Donald Trump. On the day he left office, he threatened he was going to leave the party, he was going to create his own party, and she begged him to stay in and then threatened him uh, to, uh, you know, that, 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 that they would stop paying his legal bills, that they would take away his ability to raise money, that it was going to cost him a lot of money, and he ended up not leaving. So the question is, what would have happened if Ronna McDaniel said, good riddance, if Kevin McCarthy said, he's a disgraced former president, let's move on. But the reason why they made a different calculation, George, is they both believed that if Trump moved away from the party, he would bring his hardcore supporters with him and the Republicans would not be able to win another election. And he's determined now to win the presidency again, in large part to keep himself out of jail. I mean, he really is looking at two possible paths here, um, is being elected again as president or the very real possibility that he'll go to prison. I mean, this is really, an, he, he calls 2024 the final battle. 
I mean, it's really kind of apocalyptic the way he talks about it. And listen to what he says. I think that, I think that what's happened over the past year, uh, uh, you know, his campaign's almost a year old now, is people have not really actually paid much attention to, to what, what Donald says. Trump is doing and saying now. There's been endless coverage of the court cases, the legal battles, but listen to what he's saying. He is saying this is the final battle. And of course that raises questions, and you can see why he's doing it again, prison or the White House is quite a stark choice for him. But what will his supporters do or think or act on if he loses? We'll find uh, out over the next year. Yeah, <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I asked Bannon that, and Steve Bannon I, I think is a, is a very key figure in this again. And I asked, aren't you worried about violence? And he told me no, uh, because we're gonna win. John Carl, thanks very much. Tired of winning. Donald Trump, the end of the Grand Old Party is out tomorrow. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.